So I'm Cathy Almond, and I work for ISC Internet Systems Consortium. We make open source um, internet infrastructure software, Bind, DHCP, and Kia. And uh, this is a talk. Um, everyone, I think, probably has had to, at some point in their life, install a security patch, either on their own little kit or they've had to plan to upgrade their software over a weekend or something like that. This is a tale of what it's like working from the other side. So um, I thought I'd start off with my favorite joke of last year, although I think it was probably a previous year. Um, you, have to you have to test your software. Um, this is one way of testing your software. I'll give you a minute to read it. I particularly like the last test. So, I don't think anybody disbelieves that most software has got bugs in it. Um, everybody tests their software. There are different ways of testing software. The longer or the more sophisticated your tests are, the longer it takes to actually test it. Um, finding bugs is important. Not all bu bugs get found immediately. Some of them appear sometime later. Some bugs, however, are more important than others to fix. Um, some of them cause problems that um, could be exploited. Um, a security vulnerability is one where it's possible for an external malicious party to do something like cause your software to break and crash, um, cause your software to damage data, cause your software to reveal data and other such problems. These sort of bugs need to be fixed quickly before somebody malicious finds out about them and starts exploiting them, or sometimes have to be fixed quickly because somebody else has found a bug before you have and is already exploiting it. So they're important. However, um, when you find the bug and what you do about it, um, When you find the bug and what you do about it matters a great deal. And it seems these days that, particularly with our code, that we seem to be producing a security fix every other day or every other month or every other couple of months. Um, so this talk is about um, the strategies that we use when we're deciding what we're going to do next, having found a problem or having had a problem reported to us. Um, there do seem to be more bugs than ever before. Um, some of the reasons for that are that testing has improved and we have got better at testing and finding bugs internally, but also there have been some bounty, problem, bounty programs out there, so more people are out looking, doing code inspection, running software testing programs against many of the infrastructure software that exists just to see if they can find the bugs before the organizations find them themselves. So as I said, there are plenty of standards and best practices out there. Um, we have our own policy on what we do when we identify a security problem. Um, I mention in passing that when we do find a problem in our code, when we find a bug in our code, we have to evaluate it not just for the seriousness of the problem it causes, but also whether it's possible for somebody malicious, should they find it, to exploit that problem. And even so, um, the decisions that we have to make sometimes are harder than they look despite the policies. All right, so this is now audience participation time. So roll your shoulders, practice getting your hands in the air. This is, this is what it's like on the other side. So suppose that you are just about to release a new beta version of your software, and you have just started doing some new testing, and your software engineer comes to you and says, um, I think I've found a way to crash the code, um, and I think it could be just done 
by sending a packet of death, as in anybody could do it. Nobody knows about it except you. Release day is tomorrow. Would you release anyway and fix it later? Or would you hold the code release? This is irrespective of any policy you've got for how you release your code. So, what would you do? Would you release anyway? Would you carry on with the schedule? Hands in the air. Who would release anyway? Oh, small numbers. Who would hold the release? What's the next cycle? <laughs> this is beta code, remember, at this point. So who would hold the release? Yeah, definite majority here and a fair number of undecideds. So what if it was the final production version that you were about to put out? You told everybody you were going to release it. The fireworks were already ready and primed. Would you release it anyway? <laughs> Nobody would release it anyway. All right. Um, what if this is a bug that you have found in your code that has been there for 10 years? Every existing version that is out there is also vulnerable, including the new one that you're about to release. Would you release it anyway? Looks like about 10% of the rooms has released it anybody. Would you hold your big fireworks and everything release and delay it? Ten to fifteen percent. A lot of indecision going on here. Okay, same scenario. The bug only affects a very, very small number of implementations. It's in a sort of real corner case of features or configurations. Would you release anyway? Slightly more people would release anyway, maybe sort of 15, 20%. Would you hold for this? About 5%. A lot of indecision. I'm, I'm getting here that people are finding it really hard to make that decision. Okay. You have found a bug. You suspect, because you haven't really tested that scenario that thoroughly until now, that there may yet still be bugs to be found of a similar ilk, as in it's a different testing use case, or um, basically it's a different engineering case to exploit the bug. So you want to test more thoroughly before you tell anybody about it, because you think that there are probably more of similar to be found. Would you hold your release? So you'd put the code out there with the bugs in it anyway. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Would you, would you defer, would you defer, all right, let's phrase the question the other way around. You have found a bug that you think there may be others of it. Um, would you carry on releasing anyway and defer announcing the bug that you have just found? So you want us to release it and to tell everybody about the bug. Okay. So if you announce this defect that you found today, you are exposing the fact that you have found a bug in this new mechanism for exploiting the code and finding vulnerabilities. So if you tell people that you have got it, there is the possibility that other people could think, ooh, that's an interesting way of exploiting the code or finding about, or um, bringing it down or whatever. Maybe I should go and have a look at that too and see if I can find more like that. Would you announce it while you carry on testing or would you keep it a secret while you carry on testing? Would you announce it? Nil. Would you tell everyone and assume that you can find the next one faster than they can? I've either confused everybody completely on this one. <laughs> All right. Last couple of scenarios. You found a bug. It's ugh, late November. You know everybody's heading into change freezes. 
you know that everybody is going to absolutely hate you if you start, uh, if you announce that there is a vulnerability and everybody should upgrade their code now during the holidays because they're in their change freeze. Nobody else knows about it. It's unlikely to be discovered randomly. Do you hang on to it and save it until after the holidays? Yes? <laughs> About 5%. Do you tell everybody despite the holidays, even though you think it's unlikely to be found? I've got about 5% saying, yeah, tell everybody, and about 3 to 4% saying, no, hang on to it. Um, and suppose this is the third bug in as many months, and everybody's absolutely weary. So you think, might be, maybe it might be a better idea to give everyone a rest and hang on to it. <laughs> Let's move on. So the other part of having to manage security defects that you find in your code is who you tell. So you have to manage your disclosure carefully. You don't just go out there and say, hey, we've got this hole in our code, and everyone goes, ah. Um, it's better to say, hey, we've got this hole in our code, and here is the version that fixes it, um, and here are the mitigation strategies. Um, we need to tell the public. Um, we potentially need to tell other organizations that use the code. Um, ours is Internet Infrastructure Code, so uh, it gets packaged into other operating systems. There are appliance vendors that use it, and so on and so forth. Um, we also have people that um, pay for support subscriptions, and so we ought to tell those. Um, there are security organizations that need to be informed because there are um, CVEs, we all know about CVEs, um, and disclosure um, paths. Um, should we tell anybody ahead of public disclosure is the next question. Because if you tell somebody who hasn't signed a non-disclosure agreement with you, what's to stop them going out there and blogging about it? Um, it's often happened, in fact, that the day after we have, or even hours after we've announced a security defect, that we will find that somebody is announcing how to crash the system with it, with a recipe online and a blog post. So, now we're on to ethics. If the, of the audience who thinks that it is right to sell advanced notification of security issues in some form or other. Yes? <laughs> okay, I have one, two, three people, four, maybe five people saying yes. Can I ask a question? Yes. Uh, the question is, um, is my question about an addition to support or at an additional, for an additional fee? Um, the answer is more about, uh, the question I was asking the audience um, was more about full stop, is it ethical to sell early access to the existence of a security issue, either as part of support or as a separate thing that you sell? So shall I ask the question again, having clarified it? Is it reasonable to sell early access to the existence of security issues in your software? Yes? Uh, same sort of answer, maybe half a dozen. No? Is it ethical to sell early advance, early notification? Yes, about eight-ish. Is it right to notify the OS packages anyway ahead of publicly announcing it? Yes? yes. Uh, probably half the room says yes, a third of the room. No? Didn't think so. 
Um, is it reasonable to tell nobody at all in advance of announcing publicly? I've got two people who say, three people who say, don't tell anybody until you go public. No? All right, here's an interesting one. You have found a bug in your software um, and you have announced the defect to the world at large. Should you at that point distribute the details and the recipe on how to test and demonstrate that this bug exists? Yes? <laughs> okay, so um, no? I think the no's just have it. And the last question is, um, is it better or is it right to bundle a bunch of security fixes? I mean, it would, would it be a better management strategy to say, okay, on the second week of the month, um, on a Thursday, that's going to be the day when we release our security defects, if we have any? Yes? The question is, what level of security defects? Um, we rate any bugs that we find, and a security defect is one that will cause harm. So, for example, crash. And if your DNS servers can be crashed reliably, then nobody can access your internet service. So it's that kind of level of serious. A security defect, that will cause harm, data corruption, denial of service, that sort of thing. <laughs> I've got people going like that about releasing the recipe. Uh, sorry, about bundling. I'm going to bring this to a close at this point. Um, as Keith mentioned, yes, we did release four security defects um, last week, announced them. We released um, new patches for our code. Um, details here, if anybody wants more details, are all available online on our website. Site. Um, what we actually did do, um, and it was interesting to hear the, the take on these, these answers and the question and answers, we did actually defer our beta releases, and we didn't put out the code until we had the fixes available. We did defer announcing the first bug that we found, and there were two reasons for that. One is that we thought that we might find more similar bugs, and we did. We were quite correct on that. The other reason is, was the reason that I mentioned as well, which is that we felt that if we announced that we had found this defect and what it was, and we suspected that there were others to be found, that other people would start looking already um, ahead of us and might find and might start exploiting them before we had announced the fixes. And these were bugs that had been in the code for probably 10, 15 years. So they were not going to be found lightly, but we didn't want to draw attention to the new testing mechanism. So that was the reason for bundling and delaying. We do tell the OS packages ahead of public announcement, usually one or two days, depending on. And we do sell um, early notification. And there is one, well, two very good reasons for that. One is that people want it. Um, there are organizations that would like to know ahead of the public announcement. And the other is that it's a revenue source, and we are open source, and therefore don't have any revenue for our product. So it's a way of funding its maintenance and development. Any questions that have not been asked already? OK, just one question, and then we need to... Uh... The last one of selling the early access to it, do you give that to anyone that gives you money? Or do you apply any ethics to that? Do we give it to anyone? I, I'm, I'm guessing that you're thinking of um, malicious organisation wanting to crash systems and bring them down. Would we sell to them? In, in theory, we sell to we will sell advance notification to anybody who has signed a non-disclosure agreement. Um, I'm assuming, but I don't know whether that includes a non-exploitation agreement as well. <laughs> That's a 
very interesting question. There's a man waving over there. Okay, we really don't have time for another question. Right, Sorry, okay. we're uh, overrunning a little bit. How do you rate your bugs? How do I? How do you rate your bugs? The question is, how do we rate the bugs? We use a, thing, a scoring system called CVSS. I mentioned that on one of the earlier slides. So if you go back and have a look at the slides, you'll be able to find it. Uh, the question was, do we use a financial impact? That's kind of implied by if you, it's implied by if you have a denial of service or corruption of data. We're looking at the effect, not the financial. CVSS 3.0. Okay, thank you, Kathy.